Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Podcast Pasta. That's a podcast that's like pasta, not the podcast that's about pasta. As always, I'm your host, Mike. And uh, if you can tell from the episode title today, I kind of want to give my general thoughts on Joe 2. Now, I'm not sure how long this episode is actually going to be because I typically don't like to do, um, like, do like reviews of recently released movies uh yeah i the only time i really do it is typically in the context of a larger discussion i'm trying to have regarding a topic and the only reason i don't usually do them it's not necessarily for lack of interest i mean i I like movies and television shows and what have you it's just more so a time thing i it feels with those types of review where with these types of reviews it kind of have to be more timely with it because if i were to do this like a month out it wouldn't you know Unfortunately, it wouldn't hit the algorithm in the same way as if you do it like closer to the release date. But um, I felt more compelled, so that's how that's why I don't know how long um, this episode is going to be, just because uh, I'm not sure how much I'll have to say about it. But you know, we'll get there when we get. There. But no, I felt compelled to uh, talk about Joker two. Um, because apparently I'm in a weird minority opinion where, if you can tell from the title, I actually like this movie. And that is not the general consensus. I think from the last time I checked anyways, it was at around, uh, God, I think like a 39% on Rotten Tomatoes, which, mind you, isn't the worst. But considering how it's, you know, Joker 2, it was a highly anticipated sequel to the first Joker film that did really well in theaters. Um, and my, I love the first Joker movie did kind of get a mixed reception too, but I'll get to that uh, a bit later. But, um, no, oh yeah, it's just reading through a lot of the discourse around it. And mind you, I'm reading this from like Twitter. So a lot of it might just be kind of bots or people trying to bait the hottest takes. So I don't know how much of it is like necessarily true or actually reflects people's opinions on this movie. But um, no, a lot of people just do not like this movie at all. So I guess, uh, I mean, I don't consider myself a contrarian, but the, in this particular case, I guess I am. I want to give my own thoughts on like why I enjoyed this movie and to kind of maybe negotiate some of the uh, criticisms that this film has received, not only from like like just, you know, casual moviegoers, but as well as like critics, because again, 39% of Rotten Tomatoes, that's the critic score. Like, um, this film is getting very much so panned. And um, I I guess I just don't see it. So, yeah, I I did enjoy this movie a lot. I think, um, thinking back on it, uh, the performances are very strong. I think Joaquin Phoenix still knocks it out of the park as Arthur Flagg slash uh, Joker. I think uh, Lady Gaga does a good job as this particular iteration of Harley Quinn. Um, and I mean, to be honest, I've never seen her as like a really bad, uh, actor or performer on, you know, when it comes to film, um, well, and singer too. I don't hate, I don't hate Lady Gaga at all, but, um, no, I never, I've never seen her like give like a purposefully bad performance due to like a lack of skill. I and mean, most of the time when she gives a lack of bad performance, I think it's in the context of everyone in the movie is doing bad because of like bad direction. And the, the example I would give is like House of Gucci. But no, I think she does well here, especially given the context of um, the purpose of uh, her character. I, I think um, I, I like how, you know, it, it was made clear that first and foremost, this is like a Joker film. So, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll get to it with more of the criticisms later. But um, no, I think she was like well utilized for um, what her role was supposed to be in this film. Uh, the cinematography is gorgeous. Um, like like or hate this movie, I think this film does some really interesting shots. You get like a lot of the trailer shots that wowed people when they first saw them. Like you know the lipstick on the uh, window or what have you. Um, no, I, I still think it's well shot. I even enjoyed a lot of the musical elements. Now, mind you, I don't have a lot of experience with like musicals myself. I've said it before on the podcast that uh, I don't really have an ear for music in the way that somebody like Sideways does. 
um, another, you know, YouTuber. But, um, yeah, so, but no, I, I think like, uh, and I hesitate to call this like a musical because I don't think it's structured in the way that like a typical musical is. I'd prefer to say that it has musical elements incorporated into its story. Uh, I think from my understanding, like part of the reason is that in Joker 2, you know, you do have a lot of emotional scenes conveyed through uh, song and through the characters singing, but I think there's also some emotional scenes like uh, some of the courtroom scenes that um, aren't conveyed or that, you know, emotional scenes in the courtroom that aren't conveyed through music. So that's why I hesitate to call this a full, uh, full on musical. But no, I mean, a lot of the, the musical elements actually worked. And again, that's surprising to me because I don't really like musicals. But I think um, the musical performances work. I like uh, Joaquin Phoenix, how there's kind of like this softness and this brokenness to the way he sings. Like he very much, um, like on a technical level, I don't know if I'd say it's like phenomenal singing, but in the context of uh, hearing the character versus hearing like, I, like I'm not hearing Joaquin Phoenix sing. Uh, no, I think I'm hearing Arthur Fleck sing this song, right? And Lady Gaga obviously knocks out of the park. I think. Um, oh, um, I, I don't know. I like her doing a. I don't know if I'd call it like acoustic, but like kind of like singing outside of like you know overly produced pop. That she, you know the genre that she occupies in. So I think like no, she she works very much to complement the style of scene that like Joaquin Phoenix does with Arthur Black. Um, I also, I also like this film in the context of how it serves the first film. So the way that I see this film, um, is that it kind of, it serves as a nice companion piece to the first Joker film in that like the first Joker movie, again, this is the way that I see it is that it kind of serves as, you know, you see like the rise of Joker. That's like the main point and like the rise of the Joker persona in Arthur Fleck. It's where we understand like Arthur as a person and you know, why the, you see this rise in the Joker persona. So the sequel kind of works as an inverse um, and basically showing us the fall of, you know, this Joker persona and like Arthur Fleck. And I think in that regard, I, it, it makes sense that this whole series is done as a duology as opposed to like continuing on into um, a franchise and you know you see like the mirrored reflections of some of the shots like kind of replicated in this film that we're taking like from the first one and um, and for that reason that's why I like that that's why I actually like the ending um, I don't, I'm not sure if I'm, I'll warn you if I get more into spoilers, but I'll just say that, you know, with that interpretation in mind, I did like how it ended and a lot of people didn't, but I might get to that more with the criticisms. But no, overall, I, I enjoyed this film, uh, strong performances, great cinematography, uh, and I, I appreciate how very much you could tell this is a Todd Phillips film. Right, like this doesn't feel. I mean, obviously, this in no way feels like. I, I don't think a committee would ever rip a lot of the choices that Todd Phillips made um, in this movie. Right, it very much feels like an auteur film, and I, I appreciate a lot of the bold choices that Todd made in this movie, even if they didn't all pan out. Because I'll, I'll be the first to admit, I don't think this is like a perfect film in any way. Um, Part of it is that, uh, oddly enough, I didn't feel like this movie needed to exist. Like, I, I very much just wanted the first Joker film. I saw it as this very much a self-contained um, like movie. It didn't really need a continuation to it. But, uh, you know, living in the reality that we do, okay, we had to continue the Joker. And, you know, we had to do a sequel because, you know, the first Joker film made a lot of money. And I, I guess, you know, in, in some ways, um, there was at least some interest from Todd Phillips to continue the story. So, um, you know, I, with that in mind, I'm glad that, you know, uh, he took a chance on some of these choices. And I think it, it worked out in more ways than not people give it 
um, credit for. Uh, but yeah, some of the criticisms are so weird for this film. Like, again, at least with some of the casual reactions that I've seen, a lot of it's from Twitter. So a lot of it, again, might be bots or people like trying to engagement bait. But, you know, some people are saying, like, this is the worst film ever made, which. If you think this is the worst movie ever made, I encourage you to see more movies. You haven't even seen the peak of like bad movies. Right? Like I I I I just can't I just don't understand. Right? Like I see a film where I at the very least I see they're trying. I see, you know, um the great cinematography, the performances, anything. And I, I don't see this from like a bad movie or or even as for or even like the worst film ever made. So I I just I just don't see that, but um, no I guess trying to navigate through some of the more earnest criticisms I might have seen I saw some critics say that like, uh, Lady Gaga was underutilized in her role, and in I could see how you could say that I mean she's not really in the film a lot, um, but. I, I think that's a good thing because first and foremost, I wanted this to be a Joker film. I felt like if you were to focus too much on like Harley Quinn in this movie, it would like kind of take away from that. So I think they utilize her like well enough. Um, also, it, I think it kind of works because um, from my interpretation of it, like, you know, we're experiencing Harley Quinn as Arthur Fleck does. Right, so there's kind of this like mystery of like how much is she playing him, how much is there like a your connection that they share or might not share, and so I think in that regards, I think you know, I, I think it was a smart choice not to like have have her featured in the film more. But I get how like you know if you advertise that as a selling point, um, that might be that might be kind of an issue. I think that's also another issue, honestly, is that uh. I don't know how well this film was marketed. And what I mean by that is I I keep up with like a lot of uh, film news just incidentally. Right? I uh I have like I follow like a Discord that posts like uh, film news. I think it's like the official like film and television Discord server. It has like a ton of people in it, but they have like a news channel that I check in every so often. Um also on on like Twitter, I get recommended like discussing films and other like related, you know, posts from pro- profiles like that that do like, film news. And so I knew from the from early on that they were gonna like incorporate musical elements into this film. But I see how if you weren't keeping up with it and you were only watching the trailers, that would have been a surprise. That would have been like surprising to you, like oh, like what? Like it would it would have been like jarring, I guess, especially if you were just coming off of, um, you know, the first film to like all of a sudden have that element incorporated in it. But I think you know you have a lot of people saying like, oh, incorporating the musical elements was weird. It just um, felt very off, and uh, I mean. I, I kind of disagree because, you know, even though, again, the first Joker film didn't really have, like, the same musical elements that the sequel does, I think uh, it, it did at the very least incorporate some musicality in its storytelling. I mean, there's obviously the dance sequence, but uh, Sideways did a video on this discussing, like, you know, the diegetics of, like, the music that you hear in uh, the first Joker film, like, how much of it is in Arthur Fleck's mind and how much of it does exist in the world. So I think like the sequel just kind of expands on that through its musical elements. And um so other criticisms that I've heard is that um I mean this is kind of getting more into like the culture war stuff. And again, I don't know how earnest people are in approaching this, but like some people took issue with uh, Arthur Fleck's harsh treatment in like the prison system. You know, some people getting weirdly conspiratorial, like, "Oh, it's a me to like punish the, you know, the more unsavory people that liked the first film or whatever." That oh, the director hated 
or like the um the studio hated the audience uh, the first film drew in so that kind of a mean punishing them or whatever weird nonsense like that but that almost seems to like it almost comes off like these people don't know that no this was this wasn't in part this the treatment of arthur fleck wasn't just to punish him in particular it's just that's how the prison system is in a lot of cases right and um i i wish i could be more direct about it but i have to like kind of skirt my language around this because i don't want to hit the 18 plus tag um for this video right but uh in particular there's like one scene in like a shower room involving arthur fleck and the guards and if you've seen the film you know the scene i'm talking about a lot of people are kind of reading a very like i guess darker angle into it which i don't know if i i mean i don't think that's what they were going for but i don't think it like matters because i don't think it takes away from what the scene was trying to convey which was just a general humiliation of arthur fleck because you know at that point in the movie he's getting like a lot of attention and he's basically you know bad mouthing a lot of the card eh, a lot of the guards during like his prison hearing or whatever and i don't know it works fine it's just a lot of people are reading very weird into it with like, ultra war stuff um but um other criticisms of uh this film um I'm, I'm trying to i'm trying to run through it in my in my head because i can't exactly um because a lot of, i'm just trying to remember off the top of my head oh a lot of people were just and this is just more of a general criticism i've heard a lot of people describe this film as boring and i mean past the point it's kind of a you know it's more of a subjective criticism like what you find boring you know i can find entertaining so on and so forth but I guess my argument against that would be I don't think this is any more boring than the first movie because you have to keep in mind the first film wasn't really, um, you know, it, was, it wasn't like on the edge of your seat thriller, right? It did have like its slower moments to build up for us to like follow Arthur to like see into his perspective or what have you. And, um, you know, I, I just see it like, Kind of continuing in that tonality into the sequel and if anything you could argue that um aspects of the sequel are more engaging than the first one by adding the musical elements to it um so i mean it's your right to say that the film is boring but i don't really see it myself in that regard um but um yeah, I I guess I will say, uh, I will admit that even though I like the film, I, I do find it difficult to recommend to people, right? Because uh, going back to like the response of the first film, I think that one's sitting at like 69%, which is technically fresh, but like obviously a little bit more divisive than people I think sometimes remember the first film being. Um. So if you didn't like the first Joker film, I don't really see this one doing that much more um, for you. Like, and it would also be kind of, and in general, like sequels have less of appeal than the first film because you, you know, kind of have to watch the first film to get this one. And if you don't like the first film, you know, well, you can be compelled to continue watching in the series, but that's whatever. Uh, but also, if you like the first Joker film, as obviously we could tell from a lot of the discourse with Joker 2, again, I don't know if a lot of these decisions would be, you'd be receptive to them. Um, because I, I, I will admit, even though I appreciate the choices, I, I, I will admit it is jarring to go into this not knowing it's a sequel and that it is very much, I think, um, while having a lot of the same tonality and following some of the similar themes from the first film, I think it is very, di like the sequel is very different from the first film. So it's very hard to recommend it for people who liked or disliked the first Joker film. But um, No, I think, uh, I think for the most part it works. I think the only criticism that I have is that there are aspects of, uh, you know, in following a series like this, you have to kind of learn more about Arthur Fleck. And I think like in the courtroom scenes, you get like some of the people there kind of, um, 
you know, explaining more about Arthur's uh, Arthur's psychology that I don't think I think was better left up to interpretation. Um, without going too much into spoilers, like part of his courtroom trial is like debating like. Oh, was he? Is he sane enough to be like fully prosecuted, or is this part of like a split personality? You know, uh, how much of basically what he did in the first film was of his own volition, right? And there's like kind of like the debate going on in there, um, the courtroom scenes, which I think is just. It, by the way, it just gets very cool how we have a. Uh, a film where we get Harvey Dent v uh, versus the Joker in like a courtroom setting, like I mean, you gotta admit that's kind of cool, right? Uh, I kind of wish that was kind of expanded in its own concept. Maybe it has been in the comics. Um, I, I have no idea. But anyways, yeah, they go into more of the psychology with like testimonials from like psychologists and what have you. And in the film, I get it; it makes sense. Like you need to because that's like what they would do to. Un- Stand Arthur's condition, but um, I, I don't know. I think it maybe it could have been shot in a way where it could have been left more up in, to interpretation of his condition. And in some ways, it still kind of is. But I, I don't know. With me, with stuff like that, less is always more like exposition or explaining motives. Like I always think, you know, it's always funner to kind of like build that interpretation in, um your own mind rather than have it like told to you which i think this film kind of does um but no uh yeah i don't know what what more i can really say i i did enjoy this movie uh i i think uh thinking back on some of the reception of it like i knew like people that follow like you know the comic book youtubers that um you know follow these movies i i had a feeling they probably weren't gonna like it um, you know, because it's very, it is like very different, I think. Um, and I, I guess I'm, uh, what I'm really worried about with the negative reception that this film got is that I don't want the studio to take the wrong lesson from it because it is bombing in theaters. Like, I think it made less than like Mobius in its opening week, which is, I mean, Moby has had the whole meme factor of it being like so bad it's good. Um, but I mean, there's like other things that don't make like apparently its Cinescore is like worse than Madam Web, and that's like insane to me. Like, Madam Web is like leagues a worse film than this. Like, I get no engagement, like bland cinematography, bland acting. I don't get the sense that anyone was trying in that movie. And so that's just weird how we live in a world where some people are like, oh no, that film is better than this one. But that's whatever. Um, but no, I feel like the... Um, I don't want studios to take the wrong lesson that, oh, the reason why Joker failed was because it is this auteur film that wasn't like made by a uh, committee, right? And I don't want like... Um, DC Studios to kind of just roll back and have every superhero movie be like, you know, just this generic bland um, you know, whatever appeases the most people type of films, like, you know, what we kind of see with Marvel, right? Like, inoffensive. Like, it's just, I hope that isn't the case, you know, and I hope that despite this, we do, despite the negative reception, I do hope that we still get, like, you know, auteur films in this nature. Um, I mean, I still have hope for Matt Reeves because the Penguin series is doing pretty good. It's doing pretty good. Um, but we'll just have to see. You know, we'll have to see with um, James Gunn and the action that he takes from DC and how all this pans out. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I wonder if um, maybe in the future, I mean, I would like to think that there is maybe a more critical reevaluation of the Joker, uh, Joker two. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see, but, um, thank you all so much for, um, joining me today. And, uh, yeah, if you, what's a good bit I could end this episode. Um, I don't want to advertise any, <laughs> hold on.
Um, oh, I guess uh, if you like food, uh, eat some ice cream. Something. I don't know. Go ahead.